everybody. Uh, welcome to today's episode of Meet the Agent. My name is Alan Perez, your host. And today I'm joined by Tina McDonald, expert realtor that's centrally located in Florida, but covers just about the entire state, uh, working with the Olympus Executive Realty. Uh, Tina, thank you so much for joining us today. I'd actually like to go ahead and uh, throw it over to you. Uh, could you give us a little bit of your background and how it is that you got into real estate to begin with? It all started, I guess, when I was a little girl. <laughs> I've just always had that drive to want more, to be myself, be independent, and just kind of take it a day at a time. And um, I've tried the corporate life, worked at Dow Chemical for over 15 years. Um, it was a great experience, but you're in this chain of command where people don't want to always help you succeed. And then I got into direct selling, selling Longer Burger baskets when I was in high school because I fell in love with a little basket and started selling. And then I, it hit me that this is a really niche market and not everyone wants these baskets. And in the meantime, still working a full-time job. So um, then I started selling Leah Sophia jewelry. So I um, went to a show and I just fell in love with jewelry. And I said, what woman doesn't love jewelry? It's so easy to put on. It doesn't take time. Like some of the other direct selling companies, you know, you have to enjoy cooking. You have to have places for all these baskets. And some people may like more contemporary things than the basket. So um, I said, jewelry is really about the person. It really sets them apart from other people. It's kind of like the icing on the cake. It really pretties things up. And so it was my way of um, helping others feel good about themselves. And every time I went to do a show, I grew, I learned, and that's the same thing with any industry that you're in, any job, you don't start out at the top of the mountain. Um, each job, you take little tidbits of information. My background, I graduated um, through Northwood University in business management and summa cum laude. So it was one of those things in high school, I didn't really apply myself. I was having too much fun uh, with friends and so on and so forth. So later on in college, I really applied myself. And when you find your niche, that's when you really, you have a focus and it's not really a job. It's not a J-O-B where, you know, just over broke. It's where you feel like you're, you're doing your hobby. It's a fun thing. And Anytime I'm helping others, whether it be through baskets, through jewelry, through houses, I sold cars before, through selling cars, you just learn about people and the rest will come. You just need to focus on them becoming their friend, learning about what makes them tick. Find that little trigger point that interests them, um, whether it be they're into dogs, talk about their dogs, if they're into family, if they're into travel, whatever their thing is that lights their fire, find that passion, and then you can build on that. And you really develop a lot of nice friendships with people. And if you go up and beyond, you don't even have to go up and beyond a lot. It's just showing that extra little touch. Some you go more above, but it's whatever you feel they need and that they're going to appreciate. And when they appreciate it, it builds you. It builds your confidence. It makes you feel more of a person that you're helping the community and people around you, not taking. And some, some people are takers, some are givers. I'm definitely a giver. And you have to have that nice balance. But yes, that's kind of my background. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, that extensive background. I mean, with what you mentioned specifically regarding the sales aspect, it sounds like you've been in sales your whole life. Uh, why is that? If you don't mind me asking, just out of curiosity. I don't know if it's because I'm a middle child that I'm kind of the rebel. I don't really know, but I'm not one to be a follower. I like to be a leader. I like to march to my own drum. I love to be creative and with real estate, you can really be creative just like you could with baskets, just like you could, you know, with uh, the jewelry and stuff. But I, I'm not one of those people that do that cookie cutter job um, where you punch in eight to five in and out and you do your thing and you forget about it. I'm always working and I tell people um, with real estate, some people are a nine to five job. That's just not me. My husband's up at five o'clock in the morning. I make him his breakfast and lunch out the door he goes and I start working and we usually don't go to bed till 10. And I tell people if there's something urgent, 
send me a text. If I'm still up, I will answer you. And I work on the weekends as well. And I'm not one of those people that works 24 seven. It's just, I am at their disposal whenever they need me. If something comes, comes around that they maybe rush want to see a house because I am a very, very impatient person. <laughs> My husband doesn't always appreciate that, but that's the way I'm built. That's the way God made me. And I realize there's other people in the world like that too. So when they ask questions, they want answers quickly, whether it be see a house, a question about a house, so on and so forth. So then that brings about the brokerage that I'm with. I am with a wonderful broker right now. Anytime I have questions, he responds, whether it be he calls me back or he texts me because you don't know everything. Even the brokers don't know everything because there's different situations that you're put in every time, whether it be your standard cash closing on a house, which is wonderful, but then you get into some, you know, it's, it, it's in a trust. So how do you do that? And then just nurturing them down the road, having that forethought, you need to open a bank account in that trust name. If you don't have a bank account open, because then they need to be able to wire the funds to your account when they close. Um, right down to sinkholes in Florida. Um, being from Michigan before, hurricane sinkholes, that, that's kind of a scary thing along with alligators. So it's something you don't always experience. So it's just learning the differences and guess what? There's not an alligator lurking around every corner either. So it's just learning and appreciating the differences of life and where the different roads are that people took. And understanding that just because one person said they want three bedrooms, two bath, a pool in this community, they may end up building a brand new home. They may end up in a different community. They may end up with a smaller house. They may end up with a bigger house, a house without a pool. Things change, dynamics change, people's lives change. So it's rolling with the punches and understanding that dynamics change in people's lives every time. Everyone's doing the best that they can. And it's a, it's a roller coaster, really it is. Some people have some up times, but guess what? There's some down times in people's lives too. That's what God tends to do to make you a stronger person in the end. And there's been a lot of different situations that come about in my life along with other people's and it makes you appreciate them. You can um, be sympathetic to some of those things a lot easier because you've experienced some of those things too. Amazing. I mean, it really sounds like it comes from ultimate empathy almost, right? Uh, like you mentioned, and I, I do want to make a point of it. Uh, you, you mentioned impatience or, you know, to paraphrase you a little bit, kind of getting impatient on behalf of other people, right? Um, putting yourself in their shoes and realizing, okay, well, even if I, you know, can send it later, maybe I should send it right now. Um, in your mind, what place does urgency having that, you know, that, that, that immediate response, what place does that have or should that have in real estate for, you know, the, the average agent? Communication is the number one key thing because it's not just you taking in information from a buying agent, a lender, um, title company, so on and so forth. It, it's communicating back to the buyer or the seller so they're not left hanging because they're wondering, did they get their offer accepted? Um, if they had repairs that needed to be done, are these going to be done? Um, right down to closing, I did a closing yesterday and it was a younger gentleman that's working with a flipper that I work with and he's kind of nurturing him under his wing. And so he came in to close and he was really, really nervous about the bank routing number. He wanted to assure, and he said it about three or four times that, you know, just want to make sure you have the right bank routing number to the title lady. Well, the title lady I've been working with for quite a long time, she's been in the industry over 30 years. And I told them, this is your time to ask questions so that you can learn. If you're not understanding what all the breakout of the numbers are, let's start learning. So you're digesting and learning each transaction. You're picking up something different from this. And I said, for the routing number and Mary, the title agent, she said, it's fine. Um, I, I know what the routing number is. I have it memorized. That's how in tune she was with it because she knew her job inside and out. And that's what I love working with is because people, they've done it so long, you can really learn from them, learn from their mistakes. That's what's going to grow you faster as a human being, as a person, as a salesperson, as any role that you're in. 
take any type of knowledge that you can get and use those as leverage, lean on those. So for me, I don't know everything, but I want to be the source for the source. I know that Mary at Chelsea Title is wonderful, 100%. Um, I know Success Mortgage, they do a wonderful job for mortgage. They don't pull any punches. They tell you the way it is. Here's a layout of everything that you need. And they don't make empty promises. That's the one thing I don't like working with is empty promises. So once you find a good title company, a good lender, stay with those companies. And it's going to make a transaction so much smoother. But learn from those people who have the experience and the knowledge and the years under their belt pick their brains, go to any training that you can go to that's going to help you succeed because every transaction is different, whether it's divorces to sinkholes, to manufactured homes, to land, to building, to, you know, elevation, to, you know, wetlands, to anything and everything. You deal with a lot of different situations. So it's, it's an interesting job and I love it. <laughs> I mean, for good reason, it sounds like you're very well equipped for it. Uh, I mean, in, in my understanding, right, and based on what you just mentioned, um, what I really want to be able to kind of get your your insight on, because like, like you were just talking about, right, working in team, working in tandem with other people, it's incredibly important uh, for communication, right? It's key, as you mentioned. How do you make sure, and is it just kind of nature of the, the industry, how do you make sure that you get better at communicating? Or rather, was there ever a time where you felt you weren't necessarily the best at communicating? Uh, and how would you recommend anybody that needs to get better at communicating to start doing that, if that makes sense? That's the same thing with, you know, you don't start off at the top of the mountain. And just because you feel like you've made it to the top of the mountain, that mountain might be taller than what you thought your expectations were. So never stop learning. Life is always about learning. You're never going to master everything. And if you are, then you're not doing a very good job because there, life is always evolving. Technology is always evolving. There's always something new out there to learn. So that's the key to it is just always try to learn. I went to a training class the other day, just yesterday um, morning before my closing and picked up a few things and reiterated a few things too. The whole thing with um, the trust. I'm like, oh, that's right. When I closed on my house in Michigan, I had my house in a trust and I had to go open a bank account. I totally forgot about it. But I have a listing, same type of situation. And um, we're getting closer to uh, closing on it. And so I mentioned to them yesterday because it, it sparked a, a memory that, oh, right, we need to have, make sure you have a, a bank account open in the trust name because that's the only way those funds can be, get wired to you. So when they get back to Michigan, because they're down here in Florida and selling their, their vacation home, they're going to open a trust up there. So it, it's all about learning and never stop learning. There's seasons for a reason. You have winter to kind of accumulate the knowledge and training and build on things. You have spring where you're planting and learning and planting those seeds, trying to grow your business, working with people who want to buy or sell drumming up some of those um, connections to um, then you have the summer where you're kind of nurturing and growing and showing houses so on and so forth to the fall where you're reaping the reward you're, you're at the closing table so it, it's kind of interesting and it's in any job that you do and it's a cyclical thing you know you may have too many people on your plate that you can't work with them and that's a good thing but then it's also a bad thing sometimes because you're working 24 7 almost um, but it, it's, it's a good thing right now because it's a seller's market. Florida is just booming and it's a great time to really learn as much as you can. The more you do, the more you learn, the more you become comfortable with anything that you do, just like a doctor, a surgeon, a nurse, anything like that. You know, it takes practice. It takes experience, questions, and no one's perfect. There are mistakes, except for doctors. You wouldn't want a mistake with them necessarily, because it could be a bad thing. But um, each person inside them has something that, it, it, it's a fire with inside you. What makes you tick? What excites you? I could never be a nurse. My sister's a nurse. No, I would be fainting. I would be crying. Couldn't do it. But helping others is what I do best at. Having the knowledge to protect them, to make sure, I, I put myself in their shoes, to make sure that I'm making them feel like they got somebody on their side. 
this is, you know, Tina does a great job. She has taught us so much through this process. We haven't sold a house, bought a house in so long, invested, so on and so forth, that she has just kind of been a wealth of knowledge for us. She, I felt like she had our back. You know, that's the enjoyment that I like to, like to hear because not everyone is going to find a house instantly that they enjoy. I'm working with one, one gentleman. It's been probably a good year and a half, two years, but it, it's timing is everything. So I know when we were looking for houses, it came right down to a closet. No, there needs to be a closet here. It's too small. There isn't one. And I remember the realtor trying to say, oh, you can overlook that. That's no big deal. And that totally offended me. I'm like, no, this is not going to work for me. <laughs> so it's understanding that when people tell you something, don't try to undermine them because it's something that's important to them. So really listen and take it with a grain of salt and make notes of things and try to find something that doesn't or does have certain features in a home that they're looking for. Sure. I mean, that, that really hits the nail on the head. Like you were mentioning, you have to, in my mind, right, the way that I understand it, as a realtor, you need to understand people on their terms, not on your terms, not how you understand what they're saying, but what is it that they're saying? Now, actually, I mean, on that same closet story, do you think that... It, for certain situations, right? If it was, you know, two parallel realtors in two parallel universes, could there be a situation where, you know, that closet thing is just a matter of getting more perspective from the client and some that, you know, a bridge that could be crossed over? Um, well, actually, I, I don't really like that question. Hold on. And we'll cut that part out. Um, but it, it really is interesting. Um, we'll, we'll keep up until where I was saying, you know, understanding people on their terms. But I do want to ask you know, kind of go in a different direction. I do want to switch gears here, actually. Um, something that you've been mentioning and are a great proponent of is the ability to self-develop, right? Grow who you are, change, and become better at who you, you know, want to intend to do. With that being said, what would you recommend that the 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 regular or, you know, standard agent out there, how, what's the best approach to actually get that insight on what you should get better at? Is it something that we can just kind of innately know, or is it something that we need to kind of get mentorship or can it be both? Again, it's that get out in the trenches and do it. You may fail and that's okay. It's a stepping stone to get you to where you want to be. Infants don't start out being CEOs of companies. You know, it, it takes some hard knocks sometimes, but you learn. Those are the, the situations that you really learn and say, okay, let's take, take a step back, review what I, I just did or what just happened. That didn't feel good. That didn't go how I thought it would. Let's tweak it. And again, you need to really pay attention to people's mannerisms. They may not be saying something, but you need to read what they're saying by their personality, by the way they look at you, by the way they look away by the way, they may act like they're not interested anymore. So try to engage them again by asking open-ended questions. And then it kind of goes from there, but it, it's definitely stepping stones and don't be afraid to fail. It, it, a lot of times it's taking and tweaking it just a little bit and then you succeed, but trial and error and just keep doing, doing what you're doing. Don't give up because you're never going to succeed if you give up. But if you keep trying different things until you do succeed, then you'll say, mm, I've learned something there. This is a key point. I'm going to do more of this in the next transaction. So it, it's definitely, it's, it's interesting the way it works, but there's a whole conglomeration of understanding body language to understanding processes. And it's not, I need to understand the contract inside and out. Yes, you do. However, you need to learn how to deal with people, communicate with them, nurture them along the way, like I mentioned the four seasons, and sometimes understanding what dynamics they have going on in their life that may be giving them a setback from moving forward on purchasing or selling or investing. And then once you understand that, getting over some of those fears, maybe they're not sure um, if they can get a loan. Well, the best way to figure that out is let me have Success Mortgage send you the online application and that's how we're going to find out how much you can afford. So it's it's directing them in a way that makes them feel good to go to the next step. Because right now they're feeling like they're at a standstill and don't know what to do. Uh, on the topic of providing value, right? Again, like I was mentioning, being a connector, being able to provide them the next kind of jumping off point or person to talk to uh, is definitely 
one of the best ways to provide value in my estimation. Uh, what other ways would you recommend or would you say that you provide and present value within your business? The value that I like to say that I add is building friendships. It really boils down to that. And I've heard from a lot of people, they just don't feel that connection. They feel like their agent's just there to, to grab another dollar and move on to the next person. Um, I've built friendships and then actually families from some of the people that we've learned to um, show houses to and learn to um, help them understand their situation in life and what they need because life, you need a village. So it doesn't need to be blood relations sometimes. Um, if there was a situation where showed a house to a family and another family came up with a little boy and they didn't have a realtor. So I showed them the house and I kept in contact with them and ended up showing them some more, some more homes and sold them a home and um, come to find out her parents had both passed away from cancer. She was from Tennessee, moved to Florida. His mother passed away of cancer. And so my husband and I kind of took, took the son and now they have two boys under our wings and we're kind of like grandpa and grandma. So you never know what God's going to throw at you, but it's definitely a treasure. Definitely. Amazing. I mean, having that, that perspective to be able to say, you know, this is a blessing in disguise um, is, I, I feel like pivotal, pivotal to business, right? Having and being able to learn from your setbacks, seeing, well, how does this, which I see is challenging to me at the time, help me develop myself and become a better version of, of who I ultimately want to be. So that, that is amazing. Um, I mean, I would definitely say that you, 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 fe it feels like you're very much cut out for the real estate business with the fact that, um, again, in our understanding, you have that base level innate curiosity, um, wanting to understand people, uh, as well as wanting to help them. Um, now, Let's see. I mean, where, where do I want to go from here? We, we've talked about a different. Oh, well, actually, uh, something that I, I, I really want to get your perspective on this, because, again, it's something that can be challenging in the real estate industry in general. Uh, Internet leads, online leads. Um, do you have any I, I mean, I guess just to, to get some insight to, to start off with, how often or how long rather is your follow up period? Say that I just gave you a new lead today. Um, how long are you going to be following up with them before you drop them off completely? I don't stop um, because it may be something that, you know, six months from now, I may send them a text. Hey, just thinking about you, uh, wanted to see how things were going until they tell me, no, we've found a house, we've moved on, we decided not to move. And then I tell them, even if they say they, they've decided not to move, please keep my contact information. And then I I do keep in contact with them. I do follow up. I do send them another text, give them a call and, and touch basis. Um, I'm dealing with a lady now that's it's been over a year. She had a situation where she got divorced, but in the divorce decree, the land was in her name. Her ex-husband had passed away and the daughter now is, is trying to deal with the land and she's trying to kind of have kid gloves on trying to deal with it. So I just, every once in a while, touch base with her, tell her what the market's doing, how hot it is right now here in Florida and what the price is that I feel we could list the property for. I want to see if there's anything else that I can do to assist them and find out um, if they have questions, get them in contact with anyone else that, that they may want to contact. Maybe they want to keep the land, build a home, whatever it may be. I'm, again, the source for the source. Great. Now, I mean, like you mentioned, it is a longer term play. Um, and I feel like that really does boil down to understanding what the sales cycle looks like for, you know, properties. Um, with that being said, I mean, are there any because, you know, getting in touch with someone and then knowing that you have to follow up with them later on, um, some agents aren't able to, to get that far with, with internet leads, with, you know, just not getting a response. Sometimes it does feel like resounding silence. You know, you send out text messages, you send out emails, you make the calls, and for some reason we're missing prospects. Um, do you have any, any insights on that? Is there anything specifically, like, do you have a system in play to make sure that you are able to either disqualify them or get some sort of response? It, it boils down to basically it, it's hit or miss. When somebody's ready to talk to someone, they're going to talk to them. If they feel like they have that connection, that personal 
touch from that person. You're not just a number. They're not just money hungry um, investors wanting to, you know, suck up all the land in the area, things like that. So it, it's one of those things you just really got to be sincere about it and say, hey, I'm just going to continually call you unless I hear otherwise from you. I'm really wondering where things are at and I want to help you through this transition, this next chapter in life. And I'm here for you. Um, I will touch base, you know, in a week and, and try to get a hold of you again. Sorry, I missed you type of thing. If you plant that seed that you're going to continually follow up with them, then they're thinking, oh, wow, you know, she, I need to tell her one thing or another because she's going to keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. So some people really like that persistence and just being honest. Honesty goes so far in this industry. And I can't speak highly enough about communication and honesty. Those are the two things that I really pride myself on and to try to be that source for the source. That's all you can do. You can't be a master at everything but trust in those people that know that industry also, whether it be electricians or, you know, plumbers, things like that, roofers, you know, we um, recently just purchased a home to use as a renter um, and we have renters in it right now and it's a new stepping stone for us, but it's an investment for later on for retirement. So it's stepping stones and understanding that um, I'm helping someone else get her wings ready and grow her family. She's a young lady, 22 years old, has a little boy, three years old, and has a boyfriend. They have a um, good head on their shoulders and trying to help them in life as well. So building that, that connection in different ways to help others is also key. So it, it's a fun thing to do. Definitely. I mean, and again, you have to have that right perspective. I think that a lot of the time it's also about just Letting yourself have that ramp up period. We will hear of different real estate agents who, you know, the the they'll plan out their adjustment and kind of emerge into the industry by giving themselves time where they do it part time, right? Where they they put out the roots, they build the relationships so that you can have sustainable transactions over the course of years, not just a couple of months, and then you end up running out of marketing funds or you know new sources for transactions. <laughs> I mean, I've sold them homes and then they're ready to resell and then um, purchase another home. And it's one of those things, my, my husband is very handy, very handy. I'm more of the visionary, he's the doer when it comes to fixing things. So we go hand in hand and um, right down to um, helping a daughter find a house and she was single and the house needed some work. So my husband and I went over there to help her fix some things around the house that needed to be fixed, change some things out to help her after the home sale. So it's doing those extra special things sometimes that means a lot to somebody because they don't know how to do it. It's not being selfish in life and giving back when you can, when you have that knowledge to be able to help people because they do, they remember and they appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, real estate, it definitely is a business of caring about others, right? If you're able to basically learn how to do that and have their best interest in mind, and you're able to have that kind of be the root of your business, then you can kind of, uh, what would I call it? Like reverse build where your business should be, right? Then you know, okay, well. <laughs> yeah. And you should never be competing against anyone else. You should always compete against yourself because one year you set a goal and then you achieve that goal, then the next year set a goal because you can't come into this industry and find one of the big gurus in your in your brokerage and say, wow, you can say I want to aspire to them, but you're setting yourself up for failure because they've been doing it for so long. They've kind of been through the trenches. Those are the people you want to have on your side to learn from them, but don't expect to get from A to Z overnight. It takes time. It takes time to build rapport, friendships, and then from there, they refer you to people and it's not something that happens overnight. So it's, it's a learning experience and it's stepping stones. Awesome. Now, Tina, we, we are getting towards the end of our time here. Um, I did have just a couple of last quick questions. Um, one question, and we can kind of glance over it, I guess, if, if you'd like, it's up to you. Um, what are your thoughts on set schedule? I mean, with, with the, the, the platform and the usage, I mean, with anything and everything, there are pros and cons to it. Um, but yeah, how's your, how's your experience with set schedule been so far? Love set schedule. I can't say enough positive things about it. 
again, you need to find out what your niche is and build resources around you. So I am not very technology savvy. I do not have systems or computer networks to be able to go and find some of the, these leads. I am great at nurturing, at building rapport with people. And that's where I set myself apart um, from some people, but I let set schedule help find some of those leads. And for that, we're both rewarded handsomely. So it works out hand in hand. Again, same with having that lender or that title company. Once you find a good connection, you need to stay with that connection because you're going to go places. Don't hop around a lot or um, lose focus because again, that's where you need to really emphasize and, and wholeheartedly put your focus. You can't do everything. It's hard enough showing houses all the time, drafting up contracts, answering questions, having things fixed, uh, helping with inspections, writing more contracts and, and addendums, so on and so forth, taking pictures for listings. I mean, there's a lot to it. So you can't possibly go and, and do that plus try to drum up all the business. So let schedule do what their focus is, what they have mastered and use them as a tool so that you can build your business better. Fantastic. Just amazing uh, advice all around, right? From finding your niche to making sure that you're putting the client first. Um, thank you so much for having joined us today, Tina. Do you have any actually last, you know, quick tidbits of advice for any real estate agents that might not necessarily be seeing the level of success that they would want to in the real estate industry? Really need to, again, find a brokerage that will connect with you. Find that mentor that will connect with you. Doctors don't just, you know, get their degree and then all of a sudden start operating on people. They have internships for a reason. Real estate is kind of a hard thing because you go through, you get your license and then boom, you're left out in the wild and no one's really nurturing you or you don't have that mentor anymore. You don't have someone to teach you the ropes. So you really need to be responsible enough to say, I want to make this work. I can make this work. I can succeed at this. I just need to tweak and hone and find some of those connections, find that mentor, find those people that you can really take under your wing and use as a resource so that you can be more productive and so that you can offer some of those great tools to people to build and make their transition from one chapter in life to the next that much smoother and easier for them. Exactly. I mean, again, it, it comes down to what a realtor's responsibility is, right? To, to put the, the needs of the client first and make sure that at the end of the day, they're satisfied with what transaction has occurred and that they are ideally, you know, a little bit more educated on the process. It's something that they, that's not too big anymore, right? That's not too daunting, something that they can do. Um, overwhelming when you first start out um, but just keep going forward that's all I can say is don't give up keep going forward because each day you take in a little bit more knowledge just keep asking questions go in do open houses that's what I started doing um, the first open house that I did I got lucky because people were telling me you're going to open houses to find potential buyers you're not going to necessarily sell that house that doesn't happen very often but guess what? I sold the house, the very first, the very first open house that I did. So you never know. There's fluke things that happen all the time, but it's being in the right place, right time. You just never know when it's going to be. Just put yourself out there. Exactly. Uh, and then do you have any last parting words for uh, any prospective clients that want to be in the right place, meaning, you know, Florida, moving to Florida, any prospective clients that might be interested in moving to Florida in the near future, uh, any words that you would want to share with them? Florida is definitely a hopping place. People love the, the atmosphere, the weather here. Again, being from Michigan, moving down to Florida five years ago, um, it, it was a vision that my husband and I had later on in life for retirement, but it happened sooner than we thought. Whenever we vacationed here, we just loved it. So again, you only live once, live it to the best of your ability, find out what makes you happy as a person and build on that. Fantastic. Uh, I, I really appreciate the wisdom. Tina, thank you so much for having joined us today. Um, 
for our viewers and our listeners, uh, that does it for today's episode of Meet the Agent. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the episode and want to see more content like this. Uh, other than that, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.